Hey guys, Hardly Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to continue working on the ability system and we're going to uh, continue looking at the area effect behavior that we started in the, in the last video. First, uh, I'll do a quick overview of what we went over last time and then we're going to clean up some of these warnings or a couple of the warnings down below. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at more how we can apply damage with our sphere collider. So speaking of sphere collider, here we have that projectile, right? It's just a cube that we've added a few things to it. And uh, in the last video, we've added this sphere collider. And if you don't remember how we did that, we went to add component, physics, and then sphere collider. And we talked about how we can use this as a trigger for our area of effect, right? So what we're going to do is turn this on or create this sphere collider at the uh, impact, right? So when our fireball, because we're working on the fireball, fireball ability first, when our fireball hits something, we don't really care what it is, but when it impacts something, we want to turn on the sphere collider, either turn it on or create it. Uh, and then we can set the radius, uh, which we talked about. We can set it with stats or it can be just a set number when we create our editor later. But we can set the radius and we can affect how much area the area effect actually affects, right? Because it's called area effect. So that's what we talked about. And then after we kind of discussed using the sphere collider, we created a new C sharp class called Area Effect, and we put it in our behaviors folder. And I'll open that up now in Unity, or in excuse me, in Visual Studio. And here's a class that we worked on, right? It it inherits ability behaviors. Uh, we created our constant string and description up here, area effect and an area of damage. Then we decided that our start time will be at the end, and we wrote this little note saying on impact, right? Uh, we added an area radius and effect duration because we have this area effect behavior that needs to last a certain amount of time and we determined that we would calculate that time with the stopwatch or monitor excuse me that time with the stopwatch so we stop we started talking about using system.diagnostics for the stopwatch and um, then the last thing we looked at was creating the base effect damage which we haven't really touched on yet but we'll talk about a little bit today uh, then we created the constructor here pretty basic we looked at uh, this this version of perform behavior right because we're using the override method or the keyword here so we're overriding the virtual perform behavior that's in the ability behaviors class uh, and then finally we started working on the coroutine of the AOE ability so what we're gonna do today is the first thing I'd like to do today actually is replace get rid of this warning here so if you look down in your console, you might have this, you might have corrected it already, but basically it says area effect.name hides inherited member unity engine uh, So what's happening here is this name and description is hiding the inherited member of name and description in basic object information. And you'll probably get you should get this or be getting this with your ranged class ability or ability behavior as well. And all you have to do is change this. So I'm actually going to change the name to A B for ability behavior and then a capital N for name and I'm going to do the same thing for description so AB for ability behavior and then a capital D and I'm going to copy these and replace them here in our constructor pretty simple and once you do that we'll go ahead and get rid of that warning uh, after you control save and now we can start working on some of the things I would like to talk about today so the first thing that we're going to talk about is I mentioned that I want this fear to be a trigger right we want this to see when something enters this area and we don't care what enters it but we want to know when something does enter it and the way we're going to do that is using a trigger event or on trigger or is trigger so if you look at the sphere collider here in the inspector you'll see a little toggle button that says in uh, is trigger and I just clicked it on so with a little check mark oh, you can just click it that turns it on and that tells the engines in the compiler saying hey this sphere that we create is a trigger and treat it as such now Let's go into Visual Studio and look at our perform behavior because if you remember correctly, we look first at the object and we figure we see if that object has a sphere collider and if it doesn't have a sphere if it does not have a sphere collider, then we add it, we give it a sphere collider. Uh, and when we do that, it on Unity doesn't automatically turn that trigger on. So we need to tell that sphere collider to turn its trigger on or turn it on or turn is trigger on or set it equal to true. The way we do that is using SC for our sphere collider. That's the one we created. So we do SC dot, and then we say is trigger, and we're going to set that equal to true, right? So we're just telling that Boolean to be true, so the compiler can treat it as a trigger. Now that gives us access to a few methods. Um, there are that, that we're going to talk about now. 
Unity has a couple built-in methods called uh, private on trigger and uh, on trigger enter, excuse me. And oh, we need a set of void. Void on trigger enter. There's a couple other ones as well. Um, there's on trigger stay, on trigger exit, and then there's on collision enter, on collision stay, and on collision exit. Uh, we don't, we aren't looking for collisions, and basically because we don't need all the the collision data, we're going to be looking uh, to see what enters our trigger, and then we're going to basically take whatever enters it and pass it to a damage method that we'll create later on. Uh, so private void on trigger enter also takes an argument and it takes a collider. Uh, collider, let's see, collider, other, we'll just call it other. Uh, the reason I'm saying other is because the Unity API calls it just, this is the basic uh, setup for it, so it looks the same. This doesn't have to be named other, but we just called it other. So the first thing we're going to be doing in here is on trigger enter is we're going to be setting a bool to true, and that bool is going to be is occupied, which we haven't created yet. So let's go up to the top, we're going to create a private variable. Uh, and it's going to be a boolean, so bool, and it's going to be called is occupied. And we'll set it equal to false in our constructor. And what we want to do is set this equal to true when something enters the the sphere, right? So on trigger enter is going to look at the collider, and when that sphere collider goes, when something enters it, th this method is going to be called. And we want to go ahead and set is occupied equal to true, right? Now, what are we going to do with this boolean? Well, we're going to be looking at it in this while loop because what I'd like to do is apply damage instead of cons instead of applying damage for the duration of this coroutine. If you remember correctly, we set up a time where this coroutine will run the effect duration. Uh, right now, the way this is set up, we have this little comment in here that said "do damage," right? And what will happen is every single frame this thing runs in the background, it's going to subtract damage from whatever you tell it to, right? It's going to constantly do it. And personally, I don't like that. I want it to kind of do it in incremental stages, right? So like every half second, every 0.25 seconds, something, I want to keep track of that time. So the way we're going to do that is by using a boolean in here, and we're going to say if is occupied is true, then we'll go ahead and do damage, right? We only want to do damage when is occupied is true. And we're also going to look at, um, we'll go ahead and do this actually. We're going to put it in brackets because we're going to need to do another thing. So if occupy, if is occupied is true, then we're going to do damage. And then we're going to yield wait and wait a certain amount of time. So we're going to say yield return new wait four seconds. And we're going to pass in a float. So right now I'm just going to pass in a one, one F for float. Uh, and that's just one second. But we're going to create a variable that we can change later with stats, right? So we're going to set a private variable up top. It's going to be a float. And we can call this like um, tick duration. Uh, maybe damage tick. We Let's call it damage tick duration. Maybe that's a little more descriptive. If you guys have a better name for it, go ahead and write down in the description and I'll change it. Uh, but we'll call it damage tick duration, okay? And what we can do is control S, co or control C to copy that, and we'll paste it and get rid of this one F. Now, this is something to think about. Um, if you don't want it to be a set amount, so if we set this equal to 0.1, that means every 0.1 second, we are going to try the while loop again, and it's going to try the if statement, and if is occupied is still true, then it's going to apply damage to whatever is occupying the sphere. Um, you could determine this a different way, Maybe you want a percent, so maybe you want a percent of duration timer, so um, or the effect duration, excuse me. Maybe you want it 50% effect duration at all times. Uh, so like if this is two, then it would be every one second. If this is four, it'd be every two seconds. You know, it's really up to you, uh, but it's something to think about. You can kind of get uh, a little fancy here and uh, create more custom content for your project and not just copy me. Uh, but I'm going to keep it just as a float here, and I'm not going to do any more math with it. So it'll just be basically every however long this value is. Uh, so like maybe 0.1 seconds, 0.5 seconds, this is something. It doesn't really matter. But what it's going to do, it's going to come in here. It's going to when we run our while loop for the duration of our timer that we tr that we set up last time, it's going to come in this while loop. And it's going to check to see if this is true. If it's true, then it's going to apply damage. If it's false, it's just going to come here and wait for however long this damage tick duration is and then it's going to try it again and it's going to continually do that 
until this while loop fails, and then it's going to stop our timer, it's going to reset, and it's going to return null. And then so the coroutine will be over. And at that point, when the coroutine's over, our AOE effect will be done, right? So let's talk about on trigger enter and kind of figuring out when we enter the enter and leave the sphere. We know when we enter it, we occupy as true, right? So we need to also have a condition where we exit because we have to set it equal to false, right? We don't want the player to leave our area effect and then all of a sudden be still be taking damage from it. That's not right. So let's add an exit, right? So it's on trigger exit. It's same thing, collider other. And we're going to set is occupied equal to false. Now there's still one state in here that we're not really thinking about or I haven't mentioned yet and maybe you've already caught on to what it is. And basically right now this is set up to only take one person. One, it's only set up to take like look at one thing for a trigger, right? Because if someone else enters this, is occupied is already set to true. So they're going to be sitting in here waiting for damage to tick, right? But we want the person, as soon as they enter it, to take damage and then be in the uh, damage tick duration process as well. And the way we can handle that is immediately when we enter the trigger, we can check to see if is occupied is true. If is occupied is already true, then we want to do some more damage, right? We want to call our damage method here. And we're going to do it in brackets because it doesn't like comments on a single line. So we'll say do damage here again. else so if nothing's there let me tab over I'll, I'll go ahead and go through this basically what's gonna happen is if one person or one object enters our AOE effect we're gonna run this if statement it's gonna say hey is occupied true if not then we're gonna set it equal to true and then we're gonna immediately do damage to that target and then we're gonna sit and wait for the tick duration right now let's say second person, that first person or first object sitting in that AOE effect and this other object comes along and jumps right into it. It's going to come, it's going to do this method and this method is going to say, hey, if is occupied is true, which it is, right, because we already have that first object in it, then we're going to go ahead and do damage and then we're going to leave this method and we're going to be stuck continually doing damage. Pretty simple. Um, so this, this is a case for uh, when multiple objects enter it right we haven't created the damage method uh, which we'll be talking about uh, pretty soon uh, and my idea is that is basically we're gonna be pat we're gonna have a method here uh, and we'll call it on damage right we can call it say on damage and what it will take is probably like a list of targets uh, because the idea is here we don't care what the target is it's just something right it could be a rock it could be a house, it could be a piece of grass, it could be an enemy, it could be an NPC, it could be the player, right? We don't care what it is, but we want to give it multiple targets because it's an AOE effect, right? So we'll probably give it a list of targets, and then we're going to pass in that base damage. And then whatever other modifiers you can come up with, right? This is kind of the method that we'll be creating later on. Uh, and maybe this is where that base effect damage comes in. Uh, and we can apply modifiers later on and maybe you have some other modifiers here that you might want to think about uh, so like Basically, this is your time to add more stats Maybe you if you like the AOE ability you want to have all sorts of different AOE, AOE abilities But you want to increase or have different stats that affect it You can go ahead and create private variables here and when we start creating our on damage methods we can either calculate the bit the damage to pass to on damage in this method or we can or in this class or we can pass all that information to on damage and then have it figure it all out uh, but anyways this is the video that I wanted to do today I wanted to go ahead and just talk about getting rid of those warnings and the range behavior and the area effect behavior I wanted to talk a little bit about the trigger and how we're gonna be using that and then I wanted to set up these on trigger events so that uh, in our coroutine so that we know when we start adding our on damage effects and we start actually testing this with the real app, you know real spell application in unity it's going to work or at least we'll have some sort of way to start knowing where it's getting hung up uh, so let me check make sure that we don't have any errors or anything i'm not leaving you guys with a broken game because it's definitely not something i want to do looks like we're good so i'm going to end the video here hopefully you guys enjoyed it please like subscribe and comment and i'll talk to you guys next time